All right, welcome back. Episode 154 of Chaotic and Intolerant. Uh, we have John is uh, John back today. We are doing a baseball snake draft in honor of first week of baseball. I wanted to do it last week, but um, we couldn't fit it in the schedule. But baseball is back. The Red Sox are uh, red hot, red hot to start the season. Um, I haven't even been paying attention to the Royals. How, how are you feeling about the Royals? Five and four. Bobby we Wood have uh, Bobby Wood is, uh, but Michael Garcia and MJ Melendez are extremely hot. And for Bobby to be able to do Bobby things, you need somebody who can hit in front of him, somebody who can hit behind him. And that was our issue last year. We have so far statistically the best starting rotation in the MLB. It's our bullpen that is awful. We would be seven and two right now if our bullpen could hold up. So I'm feeling good. It's a better start than last year. What's the Red Sox record? Uh, I think they're five and three right now. But not bad. Um, hold on, let me pull up ESPN here because our bull, our rotation has been our offense has been our killer so far. Um, the rotation was the biggest question mark. Not even question mark. Right. It was a worry heading into the season. So, like our bullpen is fan. We're six and three. Um, okay. The, the pitching is fine. Like that's why I'm like so happy. I'm like, okay, yeah. we can figure out the offense. Our offense will come around eventually. If we can keep the pitching doing what they're doing, we're gonna be good. Like we're, Cutter we're Crawford looks like a, a serviceable major league pitcher. I have on my fantasy team. Brian Bayo's not Nick pitching Pavetta badly. Is, Nick Pavetta is like really mm-hmm. he's killing it so far I mean, yeah they're all these guys all these guys like they're finding ways like brian bayo um young guy this is a second second full season i'm yeah more than excited to see what he's gonna do i have him on one of my my fantasy teams as well i've got cutter crawford on both and i have uh bayo on one i'm trying i think maybe we called up bayo last season i he was I, up last oh, year no, yeah okay. okay he was up all last year um, but we're going to do the baseball draft. So, um, let's, let me pull up the topics. Okay. So one player, one food, one stadium, one game, and one movie. John, I'm going to so, let you start. Players and stadiums. Can we go from anywhere? Anywhere, anytime, okay. any, anything. Yeah. All right. So, um, you can get started. Uh, I'm going to let you, or if you want to go second, you can go second as well. I'm going to let you choose your spot. I wouldn't mind seeing where you start. I want to see what you start off with because the, it's the it's the food and the stadium. I want to see uh, where we're starting off, what you find important in the draft. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I feel like, I think movie is the, is definitely not a deep category, but I think my yeah. movie is going to be pretty safe. I'm going to go, I'm going to start with a stadium. I'm, I'm going to just take, knock that off the board. I'm going to go with PNC Park in Pittsburgh. Gorgeous, gorgeous stadium. You have, you know, just the amazing backdrop. Um, and the Pirates are normally not very good, so the tickets are probably going to be a lot cheaper. Um, yeah. But it's just, a, a go, I mean, you whenever you watch a Pirates game, like, you never feel like oh like i don't i don't ever want to have to look at this stadium I'm like there are stadiums yeah, then, where you look at that you're like uh, oh my god like i don't want to have to watch this game just because of the stadium but not Trump with, can't feel not with the end oh Trump can't right. feel well, I, it's just the Trump well, is the I, one go, I go to a lot oh it's i know i go to games all it's awful and i feel bad because it, they're it's a good team that that team deserves to play in a good stadium hopefully when they build a new stadium within the next few years. I'm supposed to have it open by like 2027, they said. It's that would be great. I would be at 25 games a year. Uh now I only yeah. go to see the Royals. Uh, but it's, PNC it's Park is the Yeah, it's 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 rough. PNC Park would have been would have been my pick, but then I decided to go a little deeper. Uh my stadium, I'm going to pick the polo grounds. Um former home of the New York football or baseball giants before New York had the New York football giants. Um, it housed the New York Mets for one season, 1963, I believe. 
It was the home of the Yankees from like 1913 to 1922, originally built to play polo in. So the center field to dead center was like 470 feet. Um, but a pop-up could put it out on the uh, foul poles. So if you've seen, everybody has, the clip of Willie Mays' is The Catch in the 1954 World Series, where he runs seemingly forever, changes directions three or four times, catches the ball over his shoulder. That's polo ground center field. So 483 to center. Yeah, and I think Mays is the only one that ever hit one out dead center. I mean, <laughs> it, uh, a shot out of just barely over the center field fence would be completely out of most stadiums. I mean, if you hit that at uh, you hit that at PNC, it would be in the river. It'd be bouncing off Roberto Clemente Bridge and uh, over right field. So I thought that would be a fun stadium. Um, the man, think of go- is the the Polo Grounds is the very stadium that I think of when I think of dead ball era. When I think of yeah. old baseball, I think of the Polo Grounds. Even the name is like so yeah. old. It's like. Why, I, I don't know why. It's just you don't call a stadium the grounds anymore. Like, yes, yeah. it's, it's, it's just it's the a most great place. Name. It's it's what what were they? I, I can I can hear I can hear like the um the kid outside of the polo ground screaming yeah. extra extra okay. read all Get about you. it read all about it yeah <laughs> that yeah uh, I want to see foul pole dimensions on polo grounds two hundred and fifty eight feet from home. To right field foul pole, 270, 277 to the left field foul pole. Think Unless how many home runs. Like, now. yeah. Well, like if you put Giancarlo Stanton in there, he would hit 60 home runs just right down the line. A pool hitter yeah. like that, Bryce Harper, a left handed pool hitter, he'd put at 258, he'd hit 60 home runs down just down the right field line. So they would, that's how I would build would. my team. I guarantee you they would sign every free every free agent slugger and they wouldn't be able to sign a pitcher. Like if, yeah. if they were still playing there now, that would be the most ridiculous thing of all. If we if we were still playing at the polo grounds, I mean, who I, I feel like whoever's there, I would assume it would be the Yankees, right? Like I think Yeah, and who would want to play who would want to play uh center field there? I mean, that's you're you're running eight miles in a game just on balls hitting the gaps. Yeah, Jaron Duran. He's pretty fast. I feel like yeah, the fast um, guy, you you need like the fastest fastest player in the league. Yeah, that you can hit an inside the park home run just by driving one into the gap. It, it just rolls forever. It rolls to almost five hundred yeah. feet. Those corners, you you would put one on there. And they had the uh, they had the bullpens out in out in the outfield because so few balls made it out there. It was a safe place to hang out in the corner of the outfield. So that's my stadium center fielder. Like you would, you mm-hmm. would not, you would have to not care about. I think his fielding overall or his just his really fast. All that much. You would Dyron Blanco. Just, yeah, Jared like, so, Gerard, Gerard Dyson. Like in the NFL, like you have to, like yeah. you have a specialty guy. Like you have mm-hmm. to, you would have to have a specialty center fielder. Um, great pick. Uh, I want to touch on the on the trot because. The elderly people in Florida just love the trop. They love the oh, trop. And every time yeah. every time a list comes out from like Tampa Bay the Tampa Bay Times or something about hey, we ranked, you know, the best stadiums this year, um, and the trop is like twenty twenty ninth or thirtieth, they go crazy. They lose their minds. Well, like, why would you A-seed? want to watch baseball outdoors? Yeah, everybody they're like it's a seed, it's clean. I'm like First off, I remember Not. I've seen a bat, seen a bat in the stadium before, like flying around. I've seen a bat, which is mm-hmm. insane. I've seen cats running around in the stadium before. I don't know if anyone else has seen that. But it's I have. moldy. Under it's, the seats are moldy. Like mold. Because mm-hmm. it's humid and it's not well air conditioned. However, we took our baby, uh, Alex, when he was three weeks old. I said, got to give him his first game. And they have like a mom's lounge underneath home plate that's a good place to watch a baseball game it has a big screen tv a couch a bean bag your own bathroom you have it has a fridge that's stocked with waters juices sodas and you can sit in there as long as you want as long as there's no other families with with babies has to be like newborn infants only and i watched like five innings of the game in there it was incredible 
But that's the only positive thing I can say about Tropicana Field. I gotta have a baby. <laughs> yes, Jesus. it's the best. <laughs> Everything the else is, is terrible, baby, but... I won't pay attention to the baby besides that, just yeah. just so I can get a good spot to watch a game. Yeah, you, if you're okay with sleeping two hours a night, having no free time, and getting barfed on regularly, it's other than that, it's great. You can sit in the it's lounge at the Trop. The, now, the, other, the other big gripe that I have with the Trop is the parking situation. Like, there's yeah. just nowhere to park. Like, unless you buy a parking pass ahead of time, which I never, I'm, I'm of, my dad has always taught me, you never pay for parking. You just, you just don't pay for parking. You'll find a spot. I think that's a very mm -hmm. dad thing to do. I just refuse to pay for parking 95% of the time. And there park in front of Ferg's. If they have it available, park in front of Ferg's, the sports bar, and then walk oh, it's, underneath. It's like always filled up whenever I yeah. go. Not it's when the Royals filled. are playing. <laughs> Not <laughs> well, when the Royals are playing. The Red, yeah, I mean, so I'm I get, a Red Sox fan. That's a part of the problem. <laughs> yeah, I paid like ten dollars for parking one time, and I had to walk like eighteen feet into the stadium when the Royals were playing. It was, but I get like I get there like eight hours early because I want to. I want to get uh meet the players. I got to go down and take a picture with Freddie for me, me and my baby. I'm holding him here next to Freddie. So I I have had I have some good memories of the trap. But it's um, still the, still the trap. It's it's still the concrete monster. Um, dome sweet dome, they call it. I'm going movie next, and I'm gonna go. It's between For Love of the Game um, and the Major League for me, but I'm going to pivot away from that, try to go a little unexpected. That's going to be my theme here today. Um, 42, the 2013 Jackie Robinson film with Chadwick Boseman. Um, rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman, uh, Boseman, my favorite superhero. Uh, it was a really well-done movie um, on Jackie Robinson, who I – Jackie Robinson is my GOAT. I'm not going to pick him because I can't go Jackie Robinson movie, Jackie Robinson player. Um, but I really, really enjoyed that movie. And when I was sort of trying to get my girlfriend more into baseball, um, the essential players, Jackie Robinson, Willie Mays, Mickey Mantle, for me, George Brett, uh, I showed her that movie and she, same, same thing as me, really enjoyed it. You don't have to be a baseball fan. Um, you just have to be a history fan, but being a baseball fan makes it that much better. Yeah, Another one I thought Harrison of Ford was uh, fantastic. Yeah. And Harrison Ford is a, seems like a baseball guy anyway. Although, um, okay, who's the star for love of the game? Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner. You know, Kevin Costner, he's actually doing all that. He can actually sling it. Yeah. Uh, I believe he pitched. I think we've talked about this before. So you see those movies where they have someone up there and they're throwing like that. You're like, oh, this guy is a theater kid who never played any sports. No offense to theater kids. But when Kevin Costner's up there, you're like, okay, either this is a body double or this guy played some ball. Uh, and I think that's important in a sports film. I think I think any sports movie, when you when you talk about the greatest sports movies of all time, you have to have realistic play. And I know football mm -hmm. is like football and hockey are the two like most difficult to replicate, like real time play. But my fa my favorite sports movie or one of my favorite sports movies barely has any football actually being played in it. Um, and it's a Kevin Costner movie, but it's not a Kevin Costner baseball movie. It's draft day. I love draft. I day. love draft day. And I don't understand the hate. It's it's not oh, like it's an so awesome good. movie. Like it's not like a good movie. You know, Moneyball is like a great great film. It's I See, love. I Moneyball. I don't like Moneyball. I don't think Moneyball Why? is a good movie because it doesn't work. Like people say, oh, you're gonna play a little Moneyball, you're gonna be successful. But the Athletics have always sucked, and Moneyball or not, they're awful. So that's like me making a podcast about like entrepreneurial skills, talking about like dumpster diving and selling garbage. It, it doesn't make any sense. So that's my thing. It just doesn't it doesn't appeal to me because I look at the history, I'm like, it doesn't work. But draft day, when they took um when they took Vontae Mack with the first overall pick, I stood up and clapped like I was actually watching the NFL draft. I was like, that is the right when, pick. When I first saw that movie, I didn't realize that was Chadwick because I was mm -hmm. also I think that came out in like twenty twelve. So I was still young and I didn't realize it was Chadwick Bozeman. But that movie, it is it is equally ridiculous. It is equally like 
like the 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 way that they get all those picks in the end. Oh, it never is happened. Insane. It's it I never happened. Know, I still I still don't know what happened. I still don't know how to explain it. Like if someone asked me, I'm still like I don't I don't know. Dude, he I, just, I just he finagled the greatest draft day <laughs> trades of all time. He's a great GM. Um, I wanted. I wanted them to make a sequel called Game Day that was like they're preparing for the the playoff game the next year because that QB they brought back, who I think is supposed to be Brian Hoyer. I watched that movie. I'm like, okay, a guy who a guy who came in who the prior year had an okay year. They almost made the playoffs, struggled with injuries. They were trying to bring in a new exciting QB to replace him, Brian Hoyer. They brought the running back in. They strengthened their defense. I wanted to see a, a sequel about the them making the playoffs. And just no real football, same thing, but it's just like yeah. the coaching staff and the front office getting ready for the for having some success. So I love that. Well, I also love that movie because Brian Drew is played by Tom Welling, who is like one of, one of my childhood Superman. You know, he's in Smallville. Like yeah. Smallville is equally horribly acted show. But I still yeah. love Smallville because I love Superman. A um, lot of, lot of, lot of actors in that. Uh, De- Dennis Leary, fantastic. I mean, he's awesome in that. He's like the obnoxious cow. He's he's Jimmy Johnson basically. Yeah. <laughs> Is he not like he's? They're like your team was loaded. Like, how do you not win the Super Bowl with the Cowboys? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just it's, it's a equally ridiculous. I don't franchise. understand hate. People yeah. just need to suspend disbelief when they go into that movie. Yeah, and absolutely. it would it would suck if it wasn't NFL licensed. Like if it wasn't, you know, if, if you had like the the Cleveland Sharks as as the team, it'd be like, oh well, this is a horrible, terrible movie. And Arian I Foster, can't watch those. Arian Foster is so, for some reason like one of the only real football players in that movie. That is Arian Foster. He was a, oh yeah. my god! That I just figured that out. Terry I was Cruz's like, this son. guy. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this looks like he. That guy looks like he could really play running back. I forgot, he was young then, and he yeah, was I in loved the league it. for a few years at that point. I think it. I think he had just he had just led the league in rushing when they were filming it. So oh, he like shows up at the Nightmare draft Aaron again because he actually showed up. He actually showed up at the draft that year, and they yeah. he shows up at the draft again, and they're like, "What the fuck are you doing here?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, just filming a movie. <laughs> I love Aaron Foster. But, I love Aaron Foster, but I hated having him in fantasy yeah. unless you had his backup. Um, God, blue, Alfred, Alfred blue. blue, yeah, I'll the goat of running. Alfred I had, I had the law of Alfred, uh, of the law of Alfred blue, when I first started playing fantasy, that every elite running back has a viable backup. So if yeah. an elite running back goes down, you always pick up their backup. Before the handcuff thing was a thing, that was, uh, I was, I was preaching that for years. I'm a fantasy legend. All right, I'm so you're go... up. Where are we going? So you have movie. You have movie. I have stadium movie. All right, you're up. Yeah. Let's see um, what you're doing. I'm going to go. All right. I'm, I think I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit game. Um, I'm going to wait to pick my movie. I'm going to go game. I'm going to go. Uh, what I want to get the year right on this. Um, this is one. Of, I remember when I remember where I was when I watched this. Um, October 14th, 2015. Oh, 2015 okay. ALDS. Blue Jays, Rangers. Jose Batista bat flip. The, at that point, the Blue Jays had been down 0-2 in that series, and they stormed back to a Game 5, pivotal, uh, deciding Game 5. And just one of the weirdest, weirdest sequences of games. Russell Martin um, messed fucking up that throw. I think I think it was back to the pitcher. Mm-hmm. Weird sequence, weird game. Weird games are so much fun. Um, but Game 5 of the 2015 ALDS, Jose Batista's bat flip is still memed to this day. Yeah. As much as I'm getting punched in the face uh, behind second base, that's my favorite Jose yeah. Batista moment. <laughs> I Jose Batista played for the came up for the Royals. Most people don't know that Ho, Joey Bats was a Royal. He played, did he, he hit like year twelve home runs? Yeah, he hit like twelve home runs, and then he went to Pittsburgh, hit like four home runs, and then went to uh, Toronto, where I guess steroids are more accessible, and just started cranking home runs. <laughs> I have a love hate relationship with Jose Batista. But yeah, that, I remember when people were predicting that the Blue Jays were going to win the 2015 World Series, and they might have had they not run into uh, the machine off. that was the Royals. 
Yeah. So I love that whole I love that whole they actually played uh the entire twenty fourteen and twenty fifteen playoffs on the MLB network the other night. So I went to bed, they were showing the twenty fourteen wild card game, and when I woke up they were showing game seven of the World Series, which is like the greatest game and one of my uh worst moments all in one. <laughs> yeah. So uh where are you going next? You've got PNC and twenty fifteen ALDS. So you need uh, player uh food and and um i'm gonna go with a food i'm gonna go with the this is the most chalk and at the same time it gets the most hate a hot dog a a hot dog at a baseball game is it is pinnacle baseball i mean i i mean i could go there's another food i could go um or it's actually like two other foods you could go but a hot dog just Hot dog with a little bit of mustard, a little bit of relish at a baseball game is awesome. I, I don't care what's in the hot dog. It, you are we talking say it. standard or dollar dog or are we talking footlong? I think just a standard dog. The, the, the footlong's too much. I, I can't yeah. do the footlong. It's too much hot dog. I don't need too much hot dog. Hot dog is good in the shape and size that it's in. I don't need anything that's longer. I also don't need anything that's shorter. A shorter yeah. hot dog is depressing. You want like the uh, hot dog than that. the Cincinnati Skyline Chili Dogs, they're like that long, but it's predominantly chili and cheese. That is the only acceptable mini hot dog. Otherwise, it's just call it a yeah. pig in a blanket. If if it's yeah, if it's a specialty hot dog where it's got other stuff all over it, I'll deal with that. I'm fine with that. But just a plain, I just want a plain old hot dog, mustard and relish. I'm not a raw dogging guy. I need a little. I need a little bit of lubricant <laughs> to uh to get the dog down my throat. Um. It happens. But I'm I'm a hot dog guy. And and I don't want to hear about how it's pig intestine. I don't want to hear about oh that care. they they put horse in there. I don't care. Don't care. I don't care what's that doing. horse is it's delicious. I'm sure it's it is. Tasty I love horse. hot dogs. But I mean, hot dog easy easy food pick here. Yeah, someone said you know, hot dogs, the stuff they put in hot dogs is a grade below dog food grade. Like my dogs love their food, so why we hate on I, that? I like McDonald's every once in a while. Like their their mm-hmm. meat's pretty crappy. I love Taco Bell. Taco Bell's awesome. Like yeah, the, I don't don't even I don't don't even ask those people what what they think they eat and all these other foods. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I need game player. Let me see, game player and food. Food. Okay, so I'm not worried about my food since you have your food. I am worried about my game, even though you've already taken yours. I'm going to go with my player now. Uh, I'm going to show some love to the great Henry Aaron. Hank Aaron, um, all-time leader in, like, everything, if you weren't aware. Yes. Is Uh, he forgotten? Yeah, he's the the most underrated, like, greatest player ever. And I actually had this pulled up before I went to to look at the stadiums. Some of the stuff Hank Aaron did... Is incredible. 20 years, 20 separate seasons with 20 or more home runs. That's incredible. He played 3,300 games. Um, His productivity at 20 and 38 is indistinguishable. He also came up uh, through the Negro Leagues. So I think that took a year off his career. And you want to think about, like, how recently the Negro Leagues really was a thing. Hank Aaron isn't, like, a vintage player he so is still playing the 80s so it wasn't that long ago he is the uh let's see here he is he's third all time in hits fourth in runs scored first in total bases first in extra base hits first in rbis fourth in intentional walks drawn fifth in all-time war for position players he's one of seven players in the 3500 club he's one of two in the 3700 club and with his 3,700 and whatever hits, if you take every home run away from him, he's still a 3,000 hit guy. So you talk about he's not, I mean, you talk about like Pete Rose and Ty Cobb, those guys were slap hitters. They were like slap singles and the occasional gapper uh, for a double. They weren't that fast, weren't great fielders. Hank Aaron, until he you know, hit 38, was a good fielder. Played shortstop and outfield, and 3,700 hits with 700 and change being home runs. It's pretty amazing what he did. 
And you talk about like Bonds and Ruth and all these guys that are often in a GOAT conversation. I do think he's the most underrated of the greats. So that's why I'm giving some love to the great Henry Aaron. I love it. Um, he, I, I actually just watched, uh, if you have Amazon Prime, uh, watch Reggie, the documentary about. I saw uh, it. It's on my list. Yeah. Over, Reggie Jackson. Mm-hmm. It's uh, Hank, Hank. They talk a lot in the documentary. It's very interesting. I'm um, just hearing. I think it was more about the racial uh, issues that they faced at their time. But mm-hmm. like Hank Aaron talking about how when he got his start, he the only clothes he had was the shirt that his sister gave to him and like a pair of pants and, and one pair. He had one pair of shoes like he had nothing. He literally had nothing. Mm-hmm. And he's one of the I mean, he's still like a forgotten legend. I mean, when I say forgotten, like I don't mean like, oh, nobody like everyone knows Hank Aaron. Like that's that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like people don't know, know how good he Hank really Aaron. was. Yeah, like we don't talk about Hank Aaron, how we talk about uh, Mantle or Mays, like, yeah, Man- Mickey Mantle, Willie Mays. Like we don't talk about him, like we talk about those guys. In my in my opinion, that's just from yeah. what I hear. You know when Hank came up, he hit cross handed. So normally, as a baseball player, if you are a right handed hitter, your right hand goes on top of the bat. He hit with his left hand on top of the bat, and as hard as he hit the ball, he was risking breaking his arm from having his left hand on top. I mean, he got almost to the major leagues without ever changing that. Hitting the wrong way, he was still so good that when he finally went, all of a sudden, like, unlocked a new level where he's crushing balls at, like, 18, 19 years old in the pro in the majors. Because he played for 20-something years. And he retired at imagine, 40. Imagine, like, you're doing that. And like you're you're like Hank Aaron and you're you know you're hitting like that and some coach comes up to you he's like what, the, what are you doing like just switch yeah. your hands and, and all of a sudden you're like whoa like everyone now on the team is like oh shit <laughs> like, oh they taught that guy had a hit oh my god no yeah it'd be like if you were you didn't realize that you were left handed and you always tried to pitch right handed and someone said no other hand now you're throwing 104 with a with a like a slider that drops off the table. He's incredible, mm-hmm. and I've uh, I've tr- I've definitely gotten more into Hank Aaron in the last year or so. Um, after kind of just looking back at some of the old guys and comparing some stats, I'm like, yeah, Mantle was great, but Hank Aaron was better. Um, he is what Yankee fans try to push. Mantle was great, but Hank Aaron like is the guy that people try to make you think Mantle was, or even Babe Ruth because yeah. Babe Ruth was a great hitter. Not a great fielder, not a ton of like the kind of extra base hits that Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron could hit a ton of triples, ton of doubles, and third all or second all time in home runs. So special player for my um for my game. I am going to throw a curveball here. You think I'm going to pick the 2015 or 2014 wild card game? which is definitely the best game of all time. But I'm going to take game six of the 2011 World Series. Fact check this because I'm going off the top of the head. Yes, the David Freeze game. And when you have a game or a postseason that is like 2011 postseason, people don't necessarily, like baseball people don't say, oh, yeah, that was Rangers versus Cardinals and blah, blah. No, it was the David, David, David Freeze playoff series. Because he won NLCS MVP, World Series MVP. He hit like 540 in the NLCS and then hit like 390-something in the World Series and hit one of the greatest home runs in playoff history. Game six, Mm -hmm. I think it went 11 innings. And multiple times in the game, the Cardinals were down to their last out. And every single time, uh, they, they got it back, forced another inning, then finally, Dave Freeze hit the walk-off home run. Uh, and you give up a home run like that in the 11th inning in a game where you should have put them away three separate times, series is over. You go, it doesn't matter what happens in game seven, you're not winning the World Series. Your momentum, the momentum shift is too great. And David Freeze, if you take that postseason away, David Freeze is an average ball player. 
He had one all-star season. The next year in 2012, he had a really good year. But sort of fall, fell off after that. But nobody thinks of David Freeze as anything other than the guy in the 2011 postseason. And I think that's a great uh, thing to have as a player. Like, yeah, I'm not a Hall of Famer. No, I'm not a perennial all-star. But I have what most of those guys don't. I'm a god in Cardinals lore as much as I don't like the Cardinals as a Kansas City fan. So I'm picking that game. I think it's in the top 10 all-time baseball games. I, w- I would say that. There's some old-timey games. Uh, oh, I don't, 57, I don't the whatever. Ones is I don't care. Yeah, I, don't, I wasn't there. I don't know. I, I, if, my dad they, wasn't born they yet. Couldn't, if they couldn't have black or Cuban or any other color of player in the game at that point, yeah. it's – it's asterisks. Like it just is. Yeah. Like you, you had so many fantastic players that were just, or possible fantastic players that were just not allowed to play the game. Like, yeah, yeah Babe Ruth. Did Babe Ruth ever have to hit a Bob Gibson curveball? No, he hit a <laughs> Sparky O'Buckman spitball. Yeah. Congrats, like uh, Doyle O'Hallahan or whatever their names were back then. I don't that, care. that sounds about right. I'm sure there was someone that pitched named that. Uh, yeah. Also. Weird, weird baseball name, Oral Hershiser. I, I love he Oral Hershiser. I thought he was no, he's the, the he's the Dodgers pitching coach, I think. Yeah, I don't. I didn't think he would be alive at this. Oral. Point. That's a name that like I was like, oh well, he probably pitched in like the 1950s after he came back from the war. Like that's yeah. that's what his name sounds like. So like Napoleon Lajoie, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah Sandy no, Koufax. <laughs> We've never heard of Napoleon Lajoie. He was one of those, uh, he was one of the, like, OGs. Like, the, the first group of Hall of Famers, like Honus Wagner, Walter Johnson, uh, Ty Cobb, oh. Babe Ruth. Uh, like, oh God, who's the other one? Le- not Lefty Grove, but he was in that that group of guys. Um, mm-hmm. he, was at, he was an excellent second baseman, I believe. But, yeah, he's who I think of when I think of, like, old-timey names. Napoleon Lajoie. So you're, uh, where are you on? You need player? I'm going player here. Okay. I have player and movie. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some stats here because this player is one of my favorite older players from like the 80s and 90s. Um, through seven seasons, through 1982 to 1988, he had a batting average of 356. That seven-year span, he had a batting average of 356. He retired with an, a batting average of 328 total, um, and the league average was 267 over those years. Uh, he had an on-base percentage of 450 or higher in four seasons straight, and he got 200 hits and 100 walks in four seasons in a row. No active players done at once. Um, only John Olrud, Bernie Williams, and Todd Helton have done it. Um he had a 91 career war, three uh, 3,010 hits, 1,400 walks, and seven Ks. Um, oh, oh, wait, wait, that, hold on. And so. that player loved – this player loved chicken and waffles. He loved beer. Oh, Wade Boggs. no. Wade Boggs. I knew it says you said chicken. The chicken man. He loved chicken and beer. He – I mean, I think, I think they said he drank, like, 30 beers on a flight once. Like some, some I heard a hundred. I heard someone say he once drank a hundred. Oh, oh yeah, it was a hundred. I just saw the video. Always sunny in Philadelphia the episode. They try to yeah. drink a hundred beers yeah. in, in, on a five hour flight or something. The Wade bought. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I love Wade box. I, I think he is. I think he's also the epitome of, baseball of like just his aura is baseball right like it's he's got the mustache he's a he's a grizzled type of guy former you know he played for the red sox yankees and the devil race he was on the inaugural devil Mm -hmm. ray team he was an old man but still he was still killing it even at that age um so they claim him as like they claim wade boggs is like oh he's our three thousand hit guy no he's your 210 hit guy He's the Red Sox 3,000 hit guy. The Rays also try to claim uh, yeah, Fred McGriff like that. They try and claim everyone that, that walks mm. through the door. It's crazy. It, I think they try and claim Don Zimmer. 
Yeah. Because he, he was a coach there. Lou Pinella. They, they tried they to play Lou Pinella. He mean he, he was the rookie of the year with the Royals and he played like everywhere else. He coached everywhere else. He wasn't good for them. The only guy I yeah. give them is like Evan Longoria. Uh, I still consider well, Joe Madden. Yeah, I consider Joe Madden a Ray. Um, oh, Joe Madden's a Ray. Yeah. Yeah, but there's not that many others. Kevin Kiermeyer is weird to see in Toronto. Kevin Kiermeyer is he's a Ray's guy, like an under undervalued uh, guy who does the little things. That's like Ray's baseball. So Wade Boggs does kind of fit in as a Ray. When you talk about like what they do well, they get on base, they yeah. move move guys around. Mm-hmm. At the time, they were the Devil Rays, though, and they were really, really which was horrible. a sweet name. Sweet, I, name. it's so much better. Well, they I call them the they, Devil Rays just to insult them. They still have the Stingray pen, like the Stingray petting thing, but are they the the Stingrays or are they the Rays of Sun? Because their little logo looks like a star. Which is yeah. odd. Like, are you the the like the Florida beach rays of sunlight, or are you the sting rays? It doesn't make sense. They really need to figure I out. It, I think it's what they supposed are. to be double meaning. It's a, that's what it's like supposed to be. But the I know that the ray, they're the uh, the star, is just a ray of sunshine. Like if you mm-hmm. look directly up at the sun, that's what it looks like. So yeah, I'll give that. I mean, it's still I still call them the devil rays. Just. Because, I mean, they, they haven't won a World Series. Like, win a World Series before you can talk to to anyone that has won a World Series, especially the Red Sox. Um, and then my my movie, um, this is this is the most underrated sports movie. Um, not a lot of people talk about it. Rookie of the Year gets more love than this movie, even though it is patently worse than this movie. Little Big Angels in the Outfield. Oh, I thought you were going to say first. I thought you were going to say Angels in the Outfield. <laughs> It came out, I think it came out the exact same year as Rookie of the Year. Within a couple years, the ba- the baseball that is played in Little Big League is 10 times better than what they play in Rookie of the Year. There are yeah. real baseball players. The Minnesota Twins, at the end of, I think, like the 93 season when they were filming the movie, they asked their fans, like as Fan Appreciation Day, they were like, you guys, if you guys stay... We're going to play a fake game. Ken Griffey Jr. is in the movie. I mean, na- name a player. Randy Johnson is in the movie. Like, you just – you could list – I think Mo Vaughn is in it. Um, just one of the best sports movies. A kid takes over the team as a manager yeah. and as owner, and the players hate him. They hate him, and then, you know, eventually he wins them over. They run the hidden ball trick against the Mariners, and then they lose to the Mariners. Of all things, Ken Griffey Jr. robs – the, the walk-off home run from uh, Lou, who's like the, I think he's the first baseman. He's like the, he ends up being the love interest for the mom, which the mom, first off, the mom in Little Big League has a son who is playing in the majors at this very moment, which is hilarious. Really? Yeah. And she's also much hotter than the mom in Rookie of the Year. <laughs> much hotter. Of the, of the little kids doing baseball, I'm, I feel like I'm missing one. So there's... Little Big League, there's Rookie of the Year, Angels in the Outfield. I feel like I'm missing another Little Kids Doing Baseball movie. There was one, uh, it was about the Little League World Series. It was, I think, just the perfect game, maybe? Huh. I, yeah, because I'm thinking of... Yeah, it was... Um. Yeah, they were the first non-U.S. team to win the Little League World Series. They okay. were from Monterey, Mexico. I think he threw a perfect game in the Little League World Series. One of the kids did. Which would be sweet. Let me see here. Yeah, it's a, it met with racism, language barrier. Uh, I remember this movie. It was a good movie. Yeah, now they kick the crap out of us. It was uh, all the uh, overseas teams oh, just yeah, to yeah. crush us. Like I, the, think, uh, I think it's because of travel ball. Travel ball is the reason for that. Yeah, back when I was playing, when I played, that was a thing. Like you'd be in, the, you'd be in minors, and then you got to move over the field that was like the in between uh, size, bigger outfield, but still have the small bases in the mound. And kids that should be playing on a full size mound are slinging it. Uh, that's the year you really get better as a hitter. Kids start hitting home runs. That was the best year of rec ball, and I had they were out when I was coming up. That was the the few years where rec ball was starting to kind of give way to travel ball. And there were kids leaving the rec ball 
or like the organization to go play just travel ball. It's like you don't want to have a chance to play in the Little League World Series. Even just to – even if you don't get there, you don't get to go to Omaha, you don't want to just kind of play the other Little Leagues. I made one all-star team. It was the year before the Little League World Series, before we were eligible. You still got to play on the all-star team. But then my Little League, the junior level, because they do play the, the Little League World Series all the way up to, like, uh, eighth and ninth grade kids. Uh, the junior level – Went to all, went all the way and played in the, the world championship and lost to Panama one year. And for my town, it was wild because you turn on ESPN, like uh, ESPN two, when the Little League World Series was going on. On ESPN two, the junior level was going on. I'm like, hey, that kid is in my math class. The kid that's pitching right now. That's the coolest yeah. thing. His name was Lincoln Dunham, and he could. I I ended up catching for him the next year, and he would he threw so hard. He was throwing a slider at, like, think, 13. I think these travel sports and these club sports it's are bad. some of the worst things for youth sports. You ask you ask a lot of professional athletes. They played football. They played basketball. They played baseball. They played all these sports because those work different muscles, and you gain different things from every sport, right? Like yeah. basketball, you need athleticness that you might not be able to get from only doing basketball drills. You might need that from baseball. You might, like – there's if, if you're like you're basically putting yourself in a corner you're saying oh okay i'm only gonna do these baseball drills and that's it like that's all i'm gonna do and i'm gonna hang out and play the exact same teams that we always play because every travel ball parent i see complains about how they they travel four hours to play the, play the same team teams. that is like 30 minutes away from them yeah like, and and it's <clears throat> thousands of dollars versus rec ball you pay what? A couple hundred bucks? Five hundred? Not bucks even. For, not even to play. Money. It's super cheap. And then the families, like parents, get involved. They bring snacks. You, yeah. You can, there are supplies there to use. Like if, if you're if you're just playing for the first time, you can't afford it. You can pick up a glove there, a helmet, and play. Yeah. And to your point, like I swam, played baseball, and played lacrosse all the way up through my freshman year of high school. And then I specialized just lacrosse. But playing baseball made me a much better lacrosse player. Swimming is why I have the endurance to play lacrosse. So, yeah, you're right. These guys, the kids go play travel baseball. And I see posts, even my own students, who play travel ball. Oh, we won the Cape Coral Cup. Like, how many teams were there? There were three. Oh, so you drove to Cape Coral. (laughs) Yeah, and played a round robin, and then they, they gave you a trophy. How much did that trophy cost your parents? $895 because you had to drive, stay in a hotel. You get ridiculed if you don't have the newest $2,000 bat and glove. Yeah, A lot of those travel ball teams have a deal with, like, D Marini, and they say, oh, well, through our supplier, you can buy your bat. And then if you don't buy the bat, you get made fun of. I wouldn't put my kids in travel ball. It's a, it's just no, I, and I don't I really don't I, think it gives you better shot. No, I I played I think oh I played rec ball and those are my favorite memories from being a kid uh, as a kid playing rec ball. And I remember one year they were like trying to recruit me for travel ball. My dad was like, no, like we're not doing that. It's too expensive. Like and and we just don't have the time for it. And I was like, oh fuck, I, I really want to play. Like especially it's cool to be recruited, like to be wanted by a team. And now that I'm grown up, I'm like, they, they weren't like recruiting. Like maybe, yeah, they saw some talent, but they were just like, oh, money. Like there, there's more money. That's all they care about. And it's yeah. like, it's just, it's like, it's just put into these kids' minds that they need to have the newest gear 24 seven. Like I, I can't, I can't stand seeing these kids that have elbow guards and they have yeah. like shin guards and they have sleeves and they like have like all this sliding mix when i was a kid eye black when i was a kid eye black was like the coolest thing you could have like if you were wearing like a cool design of eye black you were like fuck yeah yeah, that kid we would use crayola markers if we didn't so i tell this story stop me if i have told this story on this podcast before we were we, we i wasn't on a travel ball team but it was the this like the not the fall league it was the spring league where each little league only has one team and you do travel and play. So my dad had bought me the Easton Stealth, which at the time was the best bat. I had a Mizuno glove. 
um, all the gear. And I was pretty good. I caught and pitched. So we go to this little league in Dade City. And it's Dade City. If you know Dade City, it's heavily Hispanic and African-American and quite impoverished. It's the town where the farm workers live. Um, so we show up to their field. There, It's not a little league. It's a single field. Um, all dirt in field, like the league I played at, we had a groundskeeper at our little league. Um, the kids are wearing gym shorts, and they were like the red team. We were like the Marlins. We had fitted hats and stuff. They were like the red team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and they were wearing like hand-me-down red T-shirts. None of them all, they didn't match. And they had the bats that you would use at like the batting cages, just plain silver bat with black electrical tape. And I'm thinking, I'm going to smoke these kids. And we lost like 25 to nothing. There was a kid on their team. <laughs> I threw him a solid change up and he hit it out into the neighborhood behind the stadium. And almost every batter they put up laced a triple, double, or an, an out of the park home run, which was rare at that age. And my dad, after the game, was saying to me, like, look, it's sick to have all your gear, but those kids are just naturally talented athletes. You give Aaron Judge, like, the handle of a of a broom, he will hit a triple because he's that good. So you see these videos of kids at, like, the perfect game uh, recruiting camps. They paid $750, and now they have a recruiting profile, and they think that means they're going to go D1. Not if you're not really good at sports. If so, you're good most of the time, if you're good, somebody will find you. Like, yeah. maybe it's going to be harder. Like, maybe your coach sucks at, at getting other coaches to come and watch, and you got to go play, um, like, Juco for a little bit. But, like, yeah. you're going to be found no matter what. Like, they they scour the, the United States. They scour, like, the Dominican Republic, all these places. They go, they make sure, eventually they will see you if you truly have talent. Like, all that shit, oh, yeah. I can't stand it. I really can't stand it. These kids that, like, they, they're they just, they're, like, they're literally standing up there like pro ball players, like, doing the thing. They're, like, they, they got to take everything off. Like, it takes them, like, two minutes. It's, like, bro, when we would just throw the bat. Like, if we had a walk, like, we would just throw the bat yeah. and run. Like, and if I need to steal a base. Batting look. If I need to steal a base, I would leave the park with, with uh, like skid marks all over my hand from sliding on, on your I have, knees. I have Didn't scars. Matter. I have scars on my elbows from from stealing. I, I slid into second like one week, got all scabbed up. I was like, a, and then our opening day it was like our big opening day. I um I was running home and I you know dove in head first, which I guess you're not supposed to do. But, but I was it looks like in, awesome. At that time, I was in high school. I was like early high school. I was like a freshman in high school. So I was like, fuck you guys. I'm 14. Like, I'm fine. And just tore up my whole arm. I have blood dripping. My whole family's there. All my, my like, dad's friends are there. Like, they're cheering me on. Like, they have big signs because they're, they're trying to embarrass me. They're doing it on yeah. purpose. And they just see, like, I'm, like, covered in blood. And I was like, well, this is badass. You, like, you I'm, look, oh, I look I'm awesome right, right now. Yeah. <laughs> Like I'm a ball player right now and like no one would sit next to me because I was like, I was covered in blood, but I didn't have fucking, I would much rather have that than have all this stupid gear. I'm like, I got out of sports right before that started, like really right before all that stuff. And it's not, a, it, it's not a case of like us being like, oh, kids these days. It's the parents. It's parents that can't stand talking to other parents in sports and having their kid you know, is on the big team, has all the gear, and my kid doesn't. Yeah. It's not about your kid. It's about it's not about your kid versus their kid. It's about your kid learning the life lessons that sports can provide and making friends and feeling confident in themselves. So sometimes sometimes playing on a cold day without batting gloves fucking sucks. But it <laughs> it, it builds you, or hitting a jammer, hitting a jammer without batting gloves, but it makes you appreciate the game a little more. Yeah, I love baseball. All right, your last one. Um, I'm going with, and this is specific, Food. really shitty nachos. I don't want like I don't want the stadium nachos that are made by oh we have uh, we have a chef so and so curating our stadium menu. No, no. Oh, I like want the, the, um, the 
the, the, the goo, Colts, right? The cheesy goo. Yeah, but the Colts have a – they have a stand in their stadium that's like – there's an actual chef there that was on uh, Gordon Ramsay's Master Chef. It's like so-and-so – chef so-and-so stadium fair. No, no, no. I want the, the little circular chips – with overcooked ground beef and cheese whiz. And you eat them, you're like, oh, this is so bad. But then you leave and you're like, man, you know what I could go for right now? Some more of those stadium nachos. With like a big watered down Coke. That is the... <laughs> the watered down Coke ties it all together. Yeah. Um, I, the, Ray, the Rays actually do a good one. Um, I mean, it's not good. But it's like the uh, it's literally like a little plastic. It, it's what you get would get it like a school. Yeah. A little plastic cup of of cheese, and you peel the plastic top off. They have the round the round chips and jalapenos. My dad gets it it's every time. It's so he comes good. Out. The the rays actually on like the up like uh where were we sitting? I think it's the left field concourse. They have a uh, grilled cheese stand now. And they make it in front of you. It's like brisket, three kinds of cheese, butter. You can add uh, jalapenos and tomatoes. It's really good. But I don't want really good at a ballpark. I got it because I was like, that looks really good. But then afterwards, it's like, that's no. not what I want. I want hot dogs and nachos. The Rays have we, – we spent <laughs> – we, we spent $25 on a big thing of nachos. It was a uh, pulled pork nachos. Horrible. They were so bad because we, we were walking like through and we saw like a bunch of people with them. We were like, man, we got to try those. Those look fantastic. Pulled pork was horrible. It was fatty. It was just, just awful. God awful. So that is a testament to the really nice nachos being awful and yeah. just going with the bad nachos. If, if something's really good at a sporting event, I, I'm not sure if it's for me anymore. It's supposed to be crappy food. It's what you do. You go in there. Either. Yeah. If I want good food, I'll go to Fleming's or one of the big steakhouses. I'll go pay $85 for a meal. If I want to spend $20 on crappy food, I go to a baseball game. It's just how, how things work. So They're getting too fancy. Yeah. Go back to the basics. Shitty nachos, hot dogs, overcooked cheeseburgers. That's what I want. That's all you need. All right. Well, that's the draft. Uh, I'll go through the picks. Uh, make sure there's a link in the description. You can vote on the draft at also at chaoticallyintolerant.com um, starting on Tuesday, Tuesday, April 9th. Uh, so, John, the Polo Grounds, 42 Hank Aaron, David Freeze game, and the horrible Cheesy Goo Nachos. Um, and then me, PNC Park, ALDS Game 5, Hot Dogs, Wade Boggs, and Little Big League. Um, again, make sure to go vote on that at chaoticallyintolerant.com or at the link in the description. Uh, make sure to check out John at Spring Hill Sports Cards on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Threads. Um, also on Whatnot. Is that your name on Whatnot? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm working on building up my Whatnot, so we'll see how it goes. And eBay as well uh, if you want to buy any sports cards. Um, and we will see you on Monday or – See you on Thursday.